if you have a blog or a website and you're just not generating the traffic and revenue that you want, it's just not working, there could be a number of reasons for this. And we have to know each individual one. So we're gonna cover all of them in this video and some reasons and ways that you can improve your rankings, get your traffic back. So really just diagnosing your site, kind of personalized to you and seeing what works best. So let's get into it. So number one reason that blogs aren't working is not enough backlinks. So that's a very common one. If you're just starting a new website, your domain rating, your, your authority metric, right, is zero. So you're not going to get a bunch of traffic right away. Google doesn't really trust you if your domain rating is zero. Now, this doesn't mean you need to do a ton of link building, don't get me wrong, but you should aim to get your domain rating up to like 20, 30. And sometimes this will just happen naturally over time as you publish articles, good content stuff. But we have to just kind of gauge our pain tolerance here. Like it depends on the niche that you select. So if you're going into something super competitive, your domain rating might need to be like 50 or 60 to be in the ballpark of these sites that are in the 70s and 80s. Versus if you're in something less competitive, maybe you just need to be in 10, 20 to start getting some traffic, right? Because most domain ratings are in the 30s, 40s, and 50s. So you just really have to understand, engage your pain tolerance. For example, if you're trying to rank for something like the best VPNs, right? It's pretty much saturated and impossible now because if you look at the top 10 results, we have CNET. ZDNet, Reddit, security.org, Reddit again. Thank you, Google, for all these updates. CNET, Forbes, Consumer Reports, Tech Radar, Tom's Guide, right? So big media sites writing about that stuff. They've had articles solidified for like 15 years for that topic. I don't recommend you try to write an article to rank on Google for something like that, right? But if you go more long tail, more niche, and you talk about knitting and yarn and stuff, well, you have something like best yarn for crochet. Literally dif difficulties like zero, good volume. You look at it. And these, the domain rating of these sites are a lot smaller, right? 49, 54, Reddit, videos. But then you see in here like a 12, right? So uh, 12, a nine. So that's a really good sign because if you see a low authority site with domain rating of nine or 12 or 20 on the first page of Google, it means that you can rank for that too. So landmine number one is that you're in a competitive niche and you have no backlinks. That's usually the reason that your blog isn't working out of the gate. And there's strategies and other videos on my channel to help you do that. If you're interested in learning more too, like exactly how to find these market sweet spots and opportunities for keywords and things that you can rank for and make money on, click the link in the description below, sign up for the free 80 minute masterclass. Just put your email in and you'll be all set to watch that. And let's continue. The second reason that your blog or website isn't working is that you probably have a topical authority problem. What I mean by that is maybe you went too wide on the content that you're writing about and you don't have very specific sub niche content in specific areas. So one example here is if you think about the pet niche, right? You have a site like Spruce Pets here. Let me talk about everything from dogs, cats, birds, small pets, aquariums, reptiles, horses, products, thousands of articles, 140 million readers, right? Now they're very broad. They're covering all pets, right? Or a site like Gear Lab, which covers all kinds of outdoor stuff, climbing, hiking, biking, snowing, paddle, all that. Or Baby Gear Lab, which covers all kinds of baby products, strollers, car seats, nursery, health, feeding, diapers, soothing, right? So these are examples of larger becoming media sites that aren't like, they're not like Forbes or some giant, you know, magazine sized website. However, they cover, it says 300 topics, right? Medically reviewed articles. So the thing that's tough is as an individual blogger, if we try to compete with a site that goes this wide, we either need as much topical authority as them, meaning we need thousands of articles, or we need as many backlinks as them, which is like thousands of backlinks to get our domain rating to like 80 or something, right? So the, the, the truth is in blogging, like the wider that you go, the more topics that you cover, the more authority you need, and the more topical authority you need, meaning you need a lot of articles on each subject. So if you wanna rank for dog stuff and cats and birds, for example, you better have hundreds of articles on dogs, hundreds of articles on cats and hundreds of articles on birds, right? Or you just, you go too wide, you cover a little bit of everything and then you're not an expert in anything. And that's a problem my site had. I was covering like software, how to start a blog, affiliate marketing. We did like crypto finance, NFTs. Everything was working, credit cards but we're kind of revamping and redoing our strategy, condensing it down to content focused stuff as a sub niche, right? So it's a really common problem because you, you know, you blog about everything, it works for a while and then it doesn't. So for example, there's a site like Gear Patrol, still a really big site, but you can see their traffic went down. It's just the same problem. It was a topical authority problem going from 
writing about everything, right? When you see this, they write about gear patrols, writing about every piece of gear, things like motoring, reviews, home style tech, outdoors, fitness, almost all the niches, right? And when you cover too many niches in one blog, it gets tough because you're not really an expert in anything. You have to start competing with the big media sites and you have to have like topical authority in each individual area. So if you wanna rank for watches, you need hundreds of articles potentially on watches or at least 30, right, or more. So topical authority problem, we'll cover exactly how to solve that soon. Uh, another issue kind of going along with this is the ratio of transactional to informational content. So if you have too much transactional content on your site, like all these best of affiliate roundup posts and you have very little info content, then that's a problem, right? That's a big common problem that people have. So I recommend, you know, in the ratio, there's no magic bullet to how much informational content you need to prop up your transactional articles. But I see people recommending 70% informational to 30% transactional or 80% informational to 20% transactional. So your ratio could be flipped. Mine was also flipped a couple of years ago where I was like 70% transactional, 30% informational, kind of wide. Now we're really reining it in. Luckily, my blog was making money with uh, recurring affiliate commissions that just continue on month after month. So we're revamping stuff. But one of those things is the ratio. So look at your informational content. Do you have enough? Like if you're talking about the baby stroller thing, right? You can't just write one article on the best baby strollers and not have you know, other articles, at least five or more, right? On like tips to use baby strollers, how to choose the best ones, um, you know, which ones are the safest, like things to consider for SUVs, cars, lots of informational content. It's almost like thinking of a blog post as a chapter in a book where you need multiple chapters in order to have this topical authority. Real quick, today's video is sponsored by School. So since we're talking about making money online, School is the number one platform for courses, communities, and events. So School is an online learning and community management platform where you can post your courses, interact with your community, run live events. Basically, it's everything you need to run an entire education business. So you know, we've tried other platforms for this and we ended up using School for Blog Growth Engine, all of our communities, because it's simply the best one on the market. So with school, it's really simple. You sign up for an account and right away you can start uploading the course content, the videos, adding events like Zoom calls or coaching sessions to a calendar. You can start talking to your community in a forum. There are really no limitations. So you can add multiple courses in there, add files, resources, transcripts under every video, chat with your students. You can see student leaderboards, metrics. You can search for stuff and find things. It's gamified and easy to use with a super clean dashboard that all of our students love. Plus you can email your students when new events or posts are added. You can pin messages so everyone can see them. It's really super engaging and it keeps our students coming back every single day. So if you're looking to sell a course or build your own community, you have to use School. So you can get started by clicking the link below this video, start your own 14 day free trial, give it a spin. School, the number one community platform for creators. Another reason your website or blog isn't working is that your content isn't good enough in Google's eyes. So there's a lot of reasons. I have a full video on like the helpful content update and what to do about this new world of SEO, but really, with the helpful content update, like your content needs to be pretty good and it doesn't have to be like written perfectly. You know, we're not expert writers here, but it needs to be good enough to help an audience and provide a little bit of personalized experience. So, you know, this doesn't always work. Like Google's still showing sites like The Guardian and Forbes and stuff like that for thinner content. They just have a ton of links to prop them up. Uh, but I'll show you a couple of examples here. So, you know, this is one from uh, Outdoor Gear Lab, the seven best kayaks of 2023. What I like in this one is just like clear introduction. Uh, this table here, this chart is really easy to understand. So it has an overall score, um, pros, cons, bottom line. And then like they have, you know, individually the different rating categories. So their ratings are really intense. Now, this is just a simple, you know, column format and they're kind of making up these numbers to come up with it, but it's good, right? It's easy to understand. They have a, a really nice layout. So I like the layout of this one from an affiliate perspective because you got three links to see the price. You have an overall rating score, reason to buy, reason not to buy, really just a couple paragraphs on it. So again, this isn't some crazy personal experience based article where they, I have to buy every single kayak and I have to test every single kayak myself and take a video of myself and photos of myself. It's really just formatted nicely. That's pretty much it. And then you see, Number two, it's the same thing. So if you can get really good formatting and understanding of the product in the review, that's really helpful and good content, right? Because a kayak, this rating system like glide and tracking stability wouldn't make sense for a different type of product, like something in the kitchen or a piece of software. So 
this one I like from a you know layout standpoint. Another interesting one here I was looking at uh, is I was looking up telescopes. I was like, how do I get it? You know, I want to get a telescope. Looking at that, and I was looking Dobsonian telescope. So this one is a good from personal experience. So not the crazy layout or formatting, but good content. These are all ranking on page one um, for the best Dobsonian telescope. And you can see there's an intro. Then there's like a picture of the guy with one, which is cool, using it in my backyard, right? Uh, features of it. It's just simple text and images, but you know, pictures of it. His own take. My first telescope was the Dobsonian. That's a way to show personalization. Like, hey, I'm actually using this thing. Google likes personal uh, firsthand experience. That's been something in their recent update. So that's a good thing to have, right? Is these are all pictures of him, advantages, disadvantages. You see, it's not a crazy layout, but lots of interesting information based on personal experience. So that's good there. And then another one I like here is just, you know, another simple one on the telescopes is this one. And you can see, very simple. This is ranking on page one. Intro, photos, you know, little uh, overview of the top ones, the best six inch, eight inch, 10, 12, 14, 16. And then a simple little layout here with, you know, kind of doing what, you know, Outdoor Gear Lab did, but a lot simpler. You know, as individual bloggers, it's hard to create some crazy complex type of thing in a website. Like, I don't know how to do that, right? So it's like, but this is something simple you could create with like the Gutenberg block editor or cadence theme, something simple where you're just drag and dropping these different things like two columns, bullet list, buttons, right? Adding the affiliate links in, but it's a nice layout. It's really simple. There's a rating system, uh, really easy to read, easy to understand. So when it comes to helpful content, your content is not good enough maybe to rank, be ranking. That's another thing to audit on your site. So look at it like, you know, is there personal experience? Is it laid out in a way? Does it match the search intent and what the readers are actually looking for? Especially with these affiliate articles, you want to make sure that they actually cover the products that people want and know. So, you know, I've done research on these telescopes and it's like, you know, if you're BSing and these aren't the best, people will know, right? So that's where a little bit of niche experience comes in as well. Another reason your blog might not be working is that your design is not cohesive and your navigation is very confusing. So when it comes to getting to content, like it's pretty simple, you want a menu on your blog, right? And the menu should guide you to places that are helpful. So an example of that I like is like, again, back to the telescope one, like you're gonna see this simple sticky sidebar here where it goes to the telescope rankings and you can see this page and you can see like based on price, these are the ones that they pick. So it's like a huge telescope rankings uh, resource, which is really good for affiliate revenue. And then there's buying guides, different product rankings and reviews and things like that. So you just wanna make sure that your menu is easy to navigate and, to, and can you know categorize the content. So you have, as you're building out more content on your blog, like you can just get people to you know stuff easily. So you also wanna kinda of go down the funnel. So for example, if there's an article on like how to use the telescope, then you link to, internally link to those articles on the best ones, those transactional articles to get people down to the more transactional content. Another reason your blog isn't working is that maybe you just pick the wrong niche. You pick something that's really hard and you've been really like just struggling for the last year trying to make it work. And I, I ask like, does the niche pass the Forbes test? Forbes has, they cover what, software, hardware, technology, business, finance. If you're in one of those niches and you're not ranking, it could just be your niche is super competitive now, or like you're in health, right? Things related to health, medical devices, things where Google expects a high level of expertise, authoritativeness, trustworthiness in order to rank the content. So sometimes that's just really difficult. We'll cover soon in the video, like how to pivot from that and what to actually do if that's how, if uh, that's where you're stuck. But sometimes, yeah, you're just in a niche that's really competitive when it comes to specifically to organic traffic, right? So there's other ways and we'll cover how to diversify, but that can be a simple problem as well. And the number one is just not giving it enough time. So your site's not old enough. You start a new site, you publish 10, 20 articles, you're not gonna get traffic right away, right? It could take three months, six months, depending on the niche. If you're in something less competitive based on something like outdoor hobbies, things that are less competitive when it comes to blogging, you should be able to get traffic within a few months relatively quickly, but uh, sometimes you just don't, right? So if you have no links, you have a new site, just know that it takes some patience and time, but you know, you're know you building this business in the background of your life, you just continue to update content in a systematic way, building this content assembly line that we teach so that you're just always kind of publishing new stuff and we wait, right? It's about building these assets, these blog posts, articles that they're kind of like, 
little investments, right? Because they can work, they can make you money in the future, but you're putting the work in now to make money later in the future. So that's another one too, not giving enough time. So really with all these problems, you want to audit the changes. There could be multiple ones. You know, it could be my content's not quite good enough and I'm too wide in my content. Or it could just be, I have no backlinks yet. I need to get those and I need to publish more content, right? So there's usually more than one reason that your site's not getting traffic. It's usually multiple things. So, but you wanna stack rank the most important ones. Like if your domain rating is zero and you have 20 articles on your site and you know it's a new site, then you probably wanna to try to do some link building, right? Or if you already have a hundred articles, but they're wide and none of them are ranking, then it's like you have to audit it. Maybe you look at Google Analytics, you're getting some traffic. You look at analytics, you say, okay, these articles, they're not where I want to be. It's in a niche that is kind of irrelevant and I'm not getting any traffic. Delete all those, right? Let's niche down to a specific sub niche or two or three that we can really focus on and delete the rest. 301, redirect the articles to ones, other ones on your site or just 410 them if you don't have any links to them and it's just, just delete them. So ultimately it's like get your domain rating to 30, right? With guest posts, Haro, and some outreach, general outreach, you know, link exchanges, things like that. I have videos on that topic. Or if it's a content problem, you know, update all your articles, write it from a human experience, you know, change the layout a little bit. The good thing about blogging is every blog post can be an infinitely updatable asset, right? You never have to delete it if you think it can work. You just keep updating it, changing things, tweaking it. So you wanna audit the reasons, come up with the top one to three things that you need to change, whether it's links, whether it's the content on the page itself, or it's a topical authority problem, which is more like deleting stuff and and really honing in on your niche. But you kind of come up with those. Now let's talk about some big pivots that that you can make. So let's say you've been blogging for 12 months, 24 months, and it's just not working for you. Maybe you picked the wrong niche, right? Or maybe you are just really struggling to get traffic from an SEO organic perspective. Well, what do you do? Well, we don't wanna like just buy Google ads, right? I never recommend that. I get that question a lot. Can I just pay for traffic uh, on Google and send it to the, like, no, it doesn't work that way. It works for e-commerce brands when they're selling stuff because they're making 100% commission on every sale, right? If you're paying for traffic to an affiliate article, there is a strategy, but that's not a blogging strategy. It's a comparison chart strategy where entire businesses run on these PPC comparison charts and you need to negotiate extremely high commission rates to make it work. And it's an entirely different business model. So what we can do is we need to diversify traffic sources. So if I was in like VPNs or something, uh, I'm like, well, no, that's not gonna work from Google perspective. I'm not gonna get organic traffic in 2024 for that necessarily. But we have to realize that in 2024, Google organic SEO is just one traffic source of many. Google is also using this as a ranking factor. It's like, are you getting traffic from other sources? Social media, LinkedIn, Pinterest, Twitter, other areas that aren't just Google. So the first traffic source could be LinkedIn. So if you are in a business specific niche or like software or marketing or something that like people on LinkedIn would be interested in, then that can be a good source of traffic outside of organic SEO specifically. And there's entire business models run on newsletters just from LinkedIn to newsletter, right? Get people in your email list. One interesting way to do this is creating LinkedIn posts and then linking to a website. So for example, our uh, income growth engine president Andrew McGuire has a really good LinkedIn and he has a really good formatting for his posts. He's writing New Year's resolutions are BS. Here's some things I've learned. So you can see the different interesting pictures here, lots of engagement and 120 comments. And then you can always link to an article to read further. So you could link to a blog post in the first comment, top comment, want to learn more, click here, right? right to the blog post itself. That's a way to get traffic or to send them right to an email list. Another traffic source is Pinterest. So I don't talk about it much, but if you're really struggling to get traction and your niche makes sense for Pinterest, then it can be a really good traffic source. So with Pinterest, the most, you know, you can get traffic in lots of different niches on Pinterest, but ones that are pretty visual work well, right? Like things like cooking, clothing, certain hobbies and things like that. But you can cover anything. Like if I search like how to cook spaghetti, right? You click on this and you see an article you see it's just the uh, slapdashmom.com. So when you rank on Pinterest for a keyword, you just create a simple pin and then it links to the article. And this is a way to get traffic through Pinterest. And you can look at uh, pretty much any niche for this, but you can see it's a way to get traffic outside of just Google. So you can search for anything like uh, best treadmills, right? Anything like that. And you can say, okay, what's the best treadmill? 10, 10 available to buy. 
and then runsprintmarathon.com has it. So it's another way to get traffic outside of just Google because we know Google is very volatile, but a website is still a valuable thing to have. Like where are you gonna send all the other social media traffic, YouTube traffic, selling your own products, affiliate marketing, ads, all of it. Another tool you can use uh, to find like opportunities on Pinterest or Google or anything is a tool like Glimpse. So it uses Google Trends. I think I have a free account. It kind of blocks a lot of stuff for me, but if I click on like beauty as a category, you can see what's been rising year over year doesn't tell me this one, but something like, for example, micro perfumes is up 68%. So maybe on Pinterest, you write something about micro perfumes. You want to get ahead of the trends, right? And that's the key. Timing is a hidden component of getting traffic and visibility to a blog or a website. We can't do things that are super old. If something's been pinned that was five years old and you're trying to, you know, get in the top area for that, I'm not an expert on Pinterest. So, you know, I don't know what it's called. <laughs> but you know, you find new and emerging stuff. So maybe you talk about nano brows, heatless hair curlers, these types of things. You create simple pins with something like Canva, and then you send traffic to your blog that way. So another way to diversify your traffic. So you'll notice we just covered LinkedIn and Pinterest. These are like text-based, image-based things where we're not talking about YouTube yet, because these are you know interesting ways to get more traffic. So niches that work well for LinkedIn is more like professional and career stuff, software, business, finance, etc. Niches that work well for Pinterest, more like hobbies, image-heavy niches, food, like tattoos, design, home, lifestyle, things of that nature. If you're struggling to get traffic on Google and it's just it's not working out you can try one of these strategies. Now, another strategy outside of just sending traffic and diversifying traffic that way is pivoting entirely. So nothing is working. The problem is nothing is working. You may have picked the wrong niche entirely. You're not really passionate about it. You don't care. You don't wanna do Pinterest or LinkedIn anymore. Instead of quitting, you could pivot into YouTube. So this is why I always recommend personal branding at first because no matter what we're doing, if it's a website, blog, Google traffic, Pinterest, LinkedIn, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, it's you, you are the brand, right? And you, your interests may change. So the niches may change over time that you're interested in, right? So pivoting completely to YouTube is interesting because much like blogging, there's really just two types of videos that you create, informational videos and transactional videos, right? And instead of creating blog posts, you just create videos with text in the description. So let me show you a couple examples. So much like with blogging, like YouTube, there's keywords on YouTube too, right? So people search for stuff. So there's a tool like vidIQ, which I think has a free plan, but it's like $9 a month or something to check it out. But if you're interested in YouTube videos, you can see like, here's all of the rising keywords. So like GTA 6 trailer reaction, like these are like super broad, right? Search tons and tons of time. So lots of really broad stuff, hard to kind of make up what to do here. But if I was gonna search for something like for my own channel, I'd be like, okay, uh, affiliate marketing. Okay, searched a lot. I always think these are overestimates of the actual search volume, but you can see matching terms. So like, kind of like Ahrefs, it's like Pinterest affiliate marketing. That would be a really good one, All right? Related keywords, affiliate marketing for beginners, tutorial, uh, passive income, all of that kind of stuff. Um, so you can see different ideas for video content. And you could also do like uh, best drones. See what's related to that, what's matching. So you want to create some a drone video, best drones 2023. Or remember like the VPN one, I wonder if that's not as hard, right? So best VPNs for PC, look at that. Way less difficulty on YouTube. So what's great about YouTube is that although Google might be extremely competitive for a certain niche, YouTube is not. YouTube is always looking for new video ideas, new things to publish. So if you love VPNs, start a YouTube channel, don't start a blog because <laughs> You know, the articles on Google were written 20 years ago or more, who knows, but YouTube, there's plenty more opportunity there. So you can find video ideas with YouTube pivot completely. And we have, you know, we we're starting to teach this as a subject because I've been blogging now since 2019. I've been doing YouTube since 2021. We've discovered a way to make over a dollar per view on YouTube with over 300,000 views a month. So I don't have the biggest channel by any means, but we're one of the most well monetized channels outside of just ad revenue. Ad revenue is like 3% of our income. It's mainly through course sales and sponsorships, right? So it's a, uh, you know, there's a whole strategy there. I'm not gonna get into it here, but it's, you gotta be, you know, you sometimes, yes, do you have to show your face? That's the question I always get. Not always, but I usually recommend it. You know, you can create videos of just your hands doing stuff, or if it's like graphic design, Photoshop, or like spreadsheets, you're showing stuff in Excel, you're selling a course. There's certain niches, drawing, painting, there's certain ones where no, you don't have to show your face. But I think it can help if you 
uh, a really good format for this kind of thing is like talking head style video. You set the lights up, you turn the camera on, you start talking and teaching something because what's uh, what makes the most money online is teaching, not just entertaining. You wanna go out in the street and make a funny video, entertain people, you're not gonna make much money doing that. You need a ton of sponsors, you need millions and millions of views to make any type of ad revenue for it. So again, when it comes to blogging, when it comes to making money with this stuff, YouTube, we don't wanna be just reliant on ad revenue, things that the algorithm 100% controls. We wanna bring our power back to ourselves and build a business on these platforms. To do that with a blog, I'll cover that next. So to do it with a blog, let's just say you've been blogging for a while, you're not generating affiliate revenue or ad revenue yet. Well, those are kind of the passive income. We know there's no such thing as passive income, but they're the passive income generators because if your blog's ranking, hypothetically, you don't have to constantly update those articles. You did the work now to make the money later. However, you're giving a lot of power to Google because at that point, you're 100% reliant on the traffic, right? So for example, if I quit my business and I only had one blog and I only focused on affiliate revenue, one revenue source, one blog, that's a single point of failure. And I don't want that because then I'm reliant 100% on Google's algorithm to be my single point of failure. So it takes time over time to build and diversify revenue streams. We start with one. We start with just creating affiliate articles, informational articles for ad revenue. But you know, we want to take some of the control back from the algorithm. So to do that, we build an email list something that you can actually market to that you own. So the good thing is with the blog, you own the website, right? Web hosting, simple. And also with an email list, you own that. So if my blog were to disappear tomorrow, I still have an email list of like 130 plus thousand people on it I can communicate with. Um, so that's the problem, relying on the algorithm. So let's say you're not generating any affiliate revenue really. Well, then what do you do? Well, let's try to build an email list. So to do that, you create exit intent pop-ups on your blog posts with something like convert box. So every time someone goes to leave and their mouse cursor goes up, they get a pop-up. And now you need a lead magnet to give them, right? So for the first year and a half, maybe two years of my blog, I didn't have any product. I just had a free seven day WordPress blog launch checklist. And I had a simple seven day automated welcome series, not really selling anything. Right, but I created that lead magnet because you need to provide something of value to get someone's email list. It's a trade, right? They trade you your email list for something valuable. Just like if you click the link in the description below, you can watch a free 80 minute training of exactly what it takes to start this type of business, right? Not asking for anything else, just your email address. But I have to provide something of actual value, right? Behind the email, because that's how business works, <laughs> right? So you don't need an offer for a while while you build your email list, but you could, like, let's just say you're not getting any affiliate revenue or ad revenue, your blog's getting some traffic, but you're not making money. Well, start building your email list with ConvertBox, start diversifying your traffic sources with like Pinterest or LinkedIn and other avenues to start building that list. After you built the list, then you can, you know, understand the people in your email list, you survey them, you talk to them. Again, we're teaching, right? Any niche you can teach in, whether it's hobbies, you're teaching how to do hobbies or, you know, um, business, you're teaching some aspect of something, right? You're teaching people. That's what the internet is made of, not just entertaining people. People don't read blogs for fun anymore like they did maybe in 2001. They read them to learn. So after a while, then you can sell your own product through that. And we have, you know, other videos and ideas on how to do that. So another problem, again, is your site is spread too wide. So you have to niche down, find those three sub niches you want, and you know, use data as your guide. Use the traffic that you get as your guide. Niche down, focus on diversifying your traffic sources and building your email list. One interesting search that's changed a lot is like how to start a blog, right? So this has been all kinds of different results in here. Over the last four years, I've been kind of looking at it. I've usually been on page two for this. I was never really on page one. I got to like number nine. I was really getting a lot of backlinks too. It was, it was just taking a ton of energy to do. And I realized I've kind of missed the boat on my timing. I didn't write this article in you know, 2010 or 2008, when a lot of these people may have written it, I wrote it in 2019. So I was a little bit late to the game on this specific keyword, but it's changed a lot. And it's like, you can see there's a couple people paying for it. So like the blog starter is paying for this. So maybe they're making some affiliate commissions there for this specific one. But we see after that, there's Wix, number one, then a forum, right? This used to be totally different. I'll tell you who is the blog starter. That's good, there's a blog. Hostinger, another company. Reddit again, HubSpot, a company. Ryrob, he's been ranking really well for this one. He wrote it a while ago. Um, another blog, Neil Patel, super high DR91. The Guardian, 
Forbes. All right, so The Guardian, this article can't be that good, right? Can when you compare it to like something really valuable, like Rye Rob's article here? Like Rye Rob has a really good article. It's very long. It's probably like, if I look at the word counter, it's like 13,000 words, right? Then we go to The Guardian ranking. And you know, how to start a blog and tips. Focus on your niche, choose a name, pick your platform, design it, find your audience. This thing is not helpful but they have a ton of backlinks, right? It's 1300 words. It's 10 times shorter than Rye Rob's article, but Google is still rewarding these media sites. So when we look at it that way, if we go back, you know, we go down, we keep going down and now we're on page two and we have Shopify is on page two for this. So that's kind of a sign it's really competitive if Shopify is on page two, Adobe, The Minimalists. So this one used to be number one for a really long time. They're now number 12. They were probably making a lot of money through affiliate revenue. Now they're not. Google, Quick Sprout. Another site that's kind of broad and might have seen some fluctuations. The Savvy Couple, WordPress. You notice I'm not even in here yet. YouTube, Quora, more sponsored results. The Blog Starter, again, on Make Money Blogging, Productive Blogging, Gathering Dreams, YouTube. I've seen actually some of my YouTube videos in here as well. It just depends on how recent and how what Google's feeling that day. First Site Guide, this used to be number one as well for a while. I remember I actually know the guy that owns this site. He's a really good guy. Um, again, it just shows like, what is helpful, what is not? Sometimes it's a little bit hard to predict, which is why we need, we need to diversify. Blogging Wizard by Sophia Lee, Blogging Basics 101, Wix again, Modern Mom at Home, The Realistic Mama, Becoming Minimalist, Tech Radar, Squarespace, MailChimp. MailChimp is on page four for this, which is crazy. Bluehost, Rock Content, here I am, number 41, um, on top of like Dreamhost, Udemy, WP Beginner is even 46. Indeed, Smart Blogger, right? Convert kit. Like we're on page five and there's still convert kit. And like, so this is really competitive blog tyrant. That was a big site back in the day. It's on page six, making sense of sense page six. So it's one of those searches. That's like, okay, I know, you know, I pumped links to this thing and I wrote it and mine was like 15,000 words and infographics, videos, all that as helpful as humanly possible it's time to cut the losses, right? So when do you actually cut your losses? Well, sometimes it's just like, if they're gonna rank the Guardian uh, on the page one, but not mine, that has videos, infographics, all that stuff, they don't see me as much of an expert there because I write about all kinds of other stuff, right? I talk about blogging all the time on YouTube, but I don't really do it on my blog, which is a whole other issue in and of itself. But sometimes we just have to cut our losses, realize that, okay, maybe we're not gonna rank for that thing, it's okay, but I don't wanna be reliant on one article, one point of failure. Right, which is why we have a YouTube channel. And the blog traffic's gone down to, uh, from at its peak, 400,000 to a little over 100,000, right? Which is a big, you know, decent drop, but it's also for things that we really had no business ranking for in the first place, NFTs, crypto, stuff like that. And the blog's still making over a million dollars a year from recurring affiliate commissions, right? So I got in early on all these now very competitive software things like podcast hosting, online courses, webinars, uh, some web hosting stuff, LMS, things like that. And it's just been riding that wave of revenue. But I know now, I'm like 2024, what we're gonna do is do all these things, niche down, pick the things, redesigning the entire site, right? Deleted a ton of content and diversify traffic sources because I can't just be reliant on an algorithm. And you shouldn't be either. Like you shouldn't have your entire business focused on the algorithm. And what's good about blogging is like, yes, we're all pretty introverted. Like a lot of people don't wanna be on camera like this. So we don't have to do YouTube if you don't want. It's a good pivot. Like ultimately in a couple of years, you can do all of it. But pivoting to LinkedIn or Pinterest from just organic SEO is a really good strategy if you're not doing it because you're at least building in some diversification because to make a lot of money with a website, we need, you know, there's affiliate income, ads, selling our own stuff, sponsorships, right? Now to do that, we need traffic consistently, not just a lot and then nothing. This isn't like going viral and then nothing's happening, but we need it consistently. So we need to diversify. So that's kind of my point of this message. If your blog isn't working, you need to diversify your traffic sources and get more links because usually that's, those are the main issues. So to recap, blogging is great because it's a website, you own it. Everyone should have a website in times of economic uncertainty. Having a boss kind of sucks, right? So, you know, having your own thing that you're building that's a personal brand that can be personalized to you that you can infinitely pivot, adapt, and overcome traffic sources, income sources, all of it. Keep learning is the key. 
and things that you know keep changing ai stuff all of it just keep learning a blog is the first thing to start uh, and a real business is about diversification and weathering storms there's going to be ups and downs fluctuations if i only you know only focused on affiliate revenue in my blog and i was in the competitive software niche yes i'd still be making money and i still am i made over a million dollars this year just from old software commissions however uh, pivoting to youtube has allowed me to teach more people make a bigger impact and have a blog a youtube channel we're building a newsletter uh, other areas of the business sales efforts and all of that stuff with about 20 people and it's much bigger than it was even though i have less traffic to my blog i have way more views on youtube now than my blog ever did right so it's diversification multiple traffic sources multiple attention sources with multiple income streams is the key and it takes time to go multi-platform so know that like if you're going to start a youtube channel and you already have a blog, this thing takes time. Like you don't have to do it all at once. I don't recommend you do a bunch of things at once. You can usually just do one to two things really good at once. So I wouldn't say do Pinterest and affiliate and YouTube and all of it at once because you're gonna do everything poorly, right? So you wanna do one to two things really well and it takes a few years to go multi-platform because you need to build the people and the systems in place so that you're not doing everything yourself. Now, if you're struggling with a blog, it's probably for a number of reasons, most often, not enough backlinks, not a good content strategy, it's too wide or the content's not good enough. Usually it's not that the content's not good enough, it's just that the niche selection was kind of wrong, the articles picked aren't quite correct, and there's no backlinks. Now this is a real business. If you're not seeing results, you have to do something and pivot until you find results. So that's what personal brand businesses are all about. We're all beginners at the beginning, we might choose and do the wrong things, but we keep making mistakes and pivot until we figure out what works for us. So if that was interesting to you, if you wanna learn more exactly how to do this, 80 minutes of free training, click the link in the description below, sign up for the free masterclass. So let me know in the comments too, like what are you struggling with with your blog now? What are the top things that you think are the problems? And I'll answer you know, the questions, like maybe give some solutions. Uh, please like the video, I hope you found it helpful. Really appreciate it. Subscribe to the channel and I will see you in another video. And also, the Lions got screwed by the Cowboys. Brad Allen, you should be fired. Thank you and good night.